I mean, when you listen to someone like Francis Scotty, it's not as in tune as Michael Rabin or Hilary Hahn, but at least I think it's very beautiful nonetheless. You know, what that does is it begs the question, can it be beautiful if it's out of tune? All right. What is out of tune or in tune? Well, this refers to pitch accuracy or intonation. That is, whether a tone is played in tune or not. This is a lot to think about. Gives us a lot to consider. Mr. Lay once told me, in fact, many times told me that every note needed to be played beautifully. You know, every note had to have a beautiful tone, beautiful pitch, be beautifully clean, be beautiful. So if you've been following my videos, then this is number 69. I think you know me a bit better now. I mean, you know that I just couldn't leave it at that. Of course. I had to ask myself exactly what she meant by saying that I needed to play every note beautifully, as there was always a hidden meaning lurking behind her words. So again, I ask, can a note be beautiful if it's out of tune? Can a note be beautiful if the sound of the tone is not beautiful? I mean, how can we determine whether or not what's being played is beautiful? Well, first of all, I remember exploring once what we meant by saying something was out of tune and noticing that it literally meant that it was being played out of the tune. <laughs> that it no longer sounded like the tune. And so was out of tune. Well, with that in mind, why don't we explore the meaning of the word beautiful? According to the Collins Dictionary, the word beautiful is applied to that which gives us the highest degree of a pleasure to the senses and suggest that the object of delight approximates one's conception of an ideal. Simply put, having beauty is something very pleasing to the ear, to the eye, etc. So does this suggest that playing notes beautifully is just making the notes very pretty? just making pretty sounds? I mean, why couldn't an ugly sound be beautiful if we played it beautifully? Seriously, why not? Well, I don't mean like this, but suppose I got that quality, that character, better produced in a better way like this. I'm reminded of the story that a singer once told me. The story was that there was this diva who said to someone, do you know why I sing this note less beautifully? Well, when I do, it makes this other note over here sound even more beautiful. Now I found that to be an interesting concept. What do you think? So I believe that what we're really talking about is the production of sound, the tone, getting those notes to be beautifully produced. Perhaps one way you could think of it would be like this. The concept of beautiful is like the top, the canopy of the umbrella. <laughs> and tone, pitch, cleanliness are all subsets, are all underneath the umbrella beautiful umbrella. So beauty, the canopy, is totally dependent on what's underneath. The tone, the pitch, the cleanliness, etc. Okay, so I think that's a bit clearer, but what, but with what criteria do I use to judge whether or not it's beautiful? Well, with pitch, I think it's possible to know rather easily as the more out of tune, the more distorted the song becomes. We could have a big discussion about how notes are mathematically generated. 
you know, calculating the frequency of a note in a scale given in terms of ratios. But I don't want to go there. I don't go there right now. At least not in this video. Maybe in another. All right. With cleanliness, it would be having sounds that are pure, not scratchy, or as Miss DeLay would say, without parasites. Here, let me show you what parasites in the sound Sounds like it. And this is what it sounds like without. So you heard the difference. Well, Miss Delay had me practice skills with my point of contact being very close, extremely close to the bridge over here. This is very difficult to do, very difficult to get a really good sound, but it forced me to come to terms with the concept of playing without or at least minimizing parasites. Okay, so why don't I complicate this discussion even more as, well, Miss Delay also said to me this one day, she said, you know, Billy, nobody plays in tune. Some people are just quicker at changing the note, fixing it before others can hear it. Now that threw me, totally threw me for a loop, as my goal had always been to get the note perfectly in tune when my finger hit the string. Well, what she was suggesting brought something entirely different to the table. I mean, just how do I use this to set the criteria that I use to determine if I have played in tune? Wouldn't it mean as well that the path to the note was even more important than putting my finger on the note? All right. You see, if one admits that playing perfectly in tune is a myth, the same as playing perfectly cleanly is a myth, then we will have set a standard by which we can judge, curiously enough. Admitting this means that we are always pushing harder to get it cleaner, always pushing harder to get it more in tune. It's about the journey, not the destination. If you understand this, then you can understand what I mean. Well, my goal was and continues to be just what Mr. Lay talked to me about, to make it beautiful, to make the notes, to make every note beautiful by taking care of everything that's underneath that umbrella. I really like a phrase that was attributed to Yehudi Menuhin that I tell to my students. Apparently, he once said that if you want to be a star, then look out into the night sky and find the one the furthest away and try to be that one.